Welcome to our channel. We're Abigail and Jean, or Abby and Jay for short, and we recently completed an epic bucket list journey from DC to San Francisco. So we're in Las Vegas, baby. Vegas, baby. There is an alien. The silence is deafening. He's coming to visit some of my old friends and family. His overlords have been waiting for his arrival. <laughs> Join us in the series as we explore this incredible country. And be sure to stick around to the end where we share all the route facts, including distance, duration, gas, and accommodation costs. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you? How did you sleep? Extremely well. It's been a lovely stay here in Boulder City, Nevada. Lovely hotel. Nevada. Nevada, with a lovely museum. Yes. Very cool place. Lovely, lovely spot. Another lucky find. Come stay here instead of going to Vegas. Yes. <laughs> we were this close to going through to Vegas and we're so glad that we didn't. But neither of us felt, you know, we're really feel it. Into but, it. And then, is she going to say no? Is he going to say no? Yeah. But we are heading through there today on our way oh, to our next go destination. <laughs> no, we must go through it. Oh, At least it's Saturday, so the traffic's... Yes, yeah, Saturday morning. Hopefully it's not too bad. But yeah, we better get going. It's heating up as we stand here. Our first stop was a boring one, stocking up on supplies before heading out into the vast unknown of the Nevada desert. It's peculiar to do these everyday tasks in a strange area to us, which is somebody else's everyday suburb. Many, many minutes later, with a few things in hand from the first grocery store, we weren't finished and had to stop at the next one too. Being in the middle of the desert, we went out of our way to find the shady spot and it seems like we weren't the only ones with that idea. this is the spot. Many, 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 many minutes later. Finally, we could get on our way to our first destination even if it wasn't particularly high on our sightseeing list. So we're in Las Vegas, baby. Vegas, baby. <laughs> we're stuck in Vegas traffic and it is hot outside. 101 and it is 10 in the morning, yeah. We're just gonna drive the strip on our way out of town again, it's so. A, yeah, that's about as much as we, yeah. uh, we said before. Neither of us really wanted to come here. Yeah. <laughs> this was not high on the list. No, it wasn't. I, I didn't plan to come here at all, to be no. honest, in the original mapping of this route, of this journey. But, you know, when, when you are on the doorstep, it's kind of, you've got you to gotta just see. See. Yeah.
Now, we totally get it that for some folks, this would be a highlight and destination in itself. But thank goodness we're all entitled to our own preferences. For us, we could just as happily have skipped this little up and down drive of the Las Vegas Strip. And we certainly wouldn't choose to stay any longer than the 45 minutes that we did. But it's nice to have seen what we saw and leave secure in the knowledge that we do so without an ounce of FOMO. Each to their own, I guess. Here's the cosmopolitan. Yay. All right. This is the Bellagio. I think we threw the yeah. Big bits, you know. I think I think we can tick the box. So people come here to shop and gamble. So that constituted our Las Vegas experience. We're interested to know in the comments whether you're pro Las Vegas or like us, happy to miss it and stick to the open roads. As we entered into an unknown expanse of desert, we took the opportunity to stop at a gas station to fill up. With coffee, of course, because heaven forbid we should find ourselves stranded in the middle of nowhere without our daily caffeine fix. Hours and miles flew by and we regained our sense of freedom as the distance between us and the busyness of Las Vegas grew further and further away. Eventually this long and endless road led us to an otherworldly landscape that we were very much looking forward to. So we are about to start the extraterrestrial highway <laughs> part of the journey. <laughs> He's coming to visit some of my old friends and family. His overlords have been waiting for his arrival. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That is so cool. Let's go find Ichi. This is so much fun. <laughs> There's an alien. Okay, we found a 
big alien. We've apparently found Area 51. The alien research center. <laughs> Let's go inside. <laughs> Okay, so it was just your bog standard over commercialized gift shop, but it was still fun, especially given that we were in what felt like the literal middle of nowhere. And who's to say that aliens don't frequent the area? I've got alien coffee for you. They knew you were coming. <laughs> Here you go. It's mine. Frequent abduction card. You know, abducted ten times if it's played with you. Very happy. Well, you. Yeah. Not every day you're in Area 51. Mm -hmm. And so we continued our passage through this alien landscape with eyes to the sky in search of the promised low flying aircraft. So we've just pulled over on the side of the road because the view is expansive. There is so much of nothingness and the silence is deafening. One car has just passed and other than that, we're it. Eh? Crazy. Oh, oh, good. It was actually on this stretch of road that we were in search of the black mailbox. But unfortunately, Google Maps led us astray and we couldn't find it. Surprising really, considering there's not much here to begin with. It's in places like this, when you take a moment to take it all in, that time actually stops. And a sense of freedom euphoria takes over. In fact, Jean swears that while we were stopped here, taking in the expansive views, he experienced some kind of visitation, hearing voices of people who weren't there. Were they his alien overlords taking the opportunity of the silence to make contact? Who knows? Turns out, we weren't in fact alone in our drive along the extraterrestrial highway, that is. We kept seeing this couple stopping at similar points along the way with their little alien plush toy, and we followed suit. arrived in the town of Rachel, which is apparently where the mothership landed. <laughs> the landscape here, although vast and desolate, it's, there's something amazing about it. And the rain that's headed our way. It was at this point that the purveyor of this fine establishment admonished us for filming. For some reason, she was okay with photos, but that's where we stopped filming. To be honest, there wasn't much to film beyond what we'd already seen, except perhaps for this poster signed by Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Mind the cars. 
irrespective of the crappy diner and Rachel, this road and landscape felt to me quite magical. Like, this is the epitome of an epic road trip. Finding yourself alone in a strange place with nothing and no one else around for miles. Truly an experienced marvel at. We can understand why the aliens like this neighborhood so much. We kept an eye out for the official Area 51, but we didn't see a thing, so either it's hidden really well or it's hiding in plain sight and we just completely missed it. And just like that, we find ourselves back in civilization. Good. Not sure about the town, but the um, hotel sure is cute. Okay then. You probably can't see me, it's too dark, but listen to this. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the sound that this room makes. There's a terrible alignment of the window there, and then the AC doesn't work in this room, so it is boiling. And we've been waiting for them to come fix it for hours and hours. What's the time now, baby? It's 10 in the evening, and uh, eventually I found them in the walk in the passageway and said, no, nah, you guys got to come. And they came to check it out and said, oh, sorry about this. This room's obviously boiling, so they... They are moving us to another room, so that's a little bit of an adventure. So after a really long but enjoyable day, and after eventually getting settled into a new room, we called it a day in preparation for the next adventure. Oh, we are all looking for adventure. 